Open for Business, presented by Kicking In Australia, one of the finest and fastest growing businesses in Australia. Hi there, I'm Mike Loder and welcome back to Open for Business, where we unpack the secrets of starting and maintaining a successful business in 2022. Over the past few weeks, we've talked about what it takes to build a winning brand and create a winning workplace culture. Now, in this episode, we're shining a spotlight on the leaders, the people tasked with captaining companies and the people that work with them, navigating employees through whatever challenges and triumphs may come their way. I'm pleased to say I've got someone with me who spends his day doing exactly this, team leader and CEO of Australian Cajun seafood restaurant chain Kickin' In, it's Ravi Singh. Welcome to the program. Thanks for joining me. Thanks, mate. Now, Ravi, you've been at the helm of the good ship mm. kicking in for about five years now. Mm. You've got you started with one restaurant in Sydney, mm. of course, and now you've got twelve across mm. Australia. Mm. Take us through a little bit about the journey, mm. I suppose, and uh, if you could touch on leadership, all the better. Mate, it's been a quite an interesting journey. You know, uh, you know, uh, five years ago, Sammy Karras, my business partner, and I, we decided to bring you know the Cajun influence in Australia, which we did. Uh, very hard to source the the Cajun sauce, uh, but we wanted to you know create that Southern Louisiana you know feel, eating with your hands, you know beefs and the gloves and so forth. So we decided to create our own five uh, you know, signature sauces, which was Cajun garlic, Cajun garlic, butter, lemon pepper, and Chevrolet is a mixture of all of them. It was all about family fun feel. Uh, and in the process, you know, we have developed some great leaders in the business uh, that are now ready to take the business into the next journey, which is a opening 88 more restaurants. I love the passion yeah. that you bring. And every time you describe the food, I always <laughs> get hungry. But uh, well, I mean, as I mentioned at the top of the show, we're yeah. going to really get stuck into the topic of leadership today. Yeah. And Ravi, you're not the only leader mm. over at the Good Ship Kicking In. You've got a whole team of managers who support you and the others. Mm. Let's hear from one of them now. Hi, I'm Carla and I'm one of the managers at Kicking In. So when I came into the company, I started at the Zetland restaurant. And with that, I came into a team that already had a solid culture, great atmosphere. So it wasn't hard for me to actually come into the business and slot into that store. After about one year of working at Kickin' In, I got called into the head office by Ravi, our CEO. He um, posed a question to me, short-term assignment, would you like to go to Melbourne? In Melbourne, we have two stores. We have the Hyatt branch and the Port Melbourne branch. One of the biggest skills that I've needed to use in the Melbourne market is definitely an empowering leadership style. A lot of people can get staff in, but it's it's utilising staff. So leadership being all about inspiring people, influencing them, building them up. I believe great leadership is creating more great leaders to follow. There it is. Leaders creating more good leaders. Well said, Carla. And Ravi, as a CEO, mm. it must be a big weight off your shoulders to know there are people like Carla out there who are running the show when, you know, you're doing all what you need to be doing as well. Absolutely, Mike. I mean, it's, it's, a, it's such a great feel that, uh, that people like Carla are in the business with ourselves, that are growing through the ranks. As a matter of fact, I just, I, I just want to share some very important insights and you know, of people that are watching tonight. And this is, I mean, we currently have 92% of our management team that have grown from within the system. And that's because of, you know, good leadership, good culture. Uh, you know, people are bonding together. People are learning and growing. And in the 21st century, people need to... Uh, Need to attach themselves or engage with themselves with companies where it is not that small but small but growing at a, at a rapid rate and they're growing as uh, as the company grows and mm -hmm. carla is testament to this it sounds like there's opportunities yeah. you guys give them chances absolutely as well, which absolutely is really cool but yeah. um that's a perfect time to bring in our special guest for today, a top manager over at Coca-Cola Australia, who has worked her way up the company ladder to become one of its most senior female leaders today. Rachel Delion graduated from university in the mid-90s with a bachelor's degree in business before qualifying as a certified public accountant. After some time working at Sony Music and Foxtel, <coughs> Rachel has called Coca-Cola home for 17 years, and it's my pleasure to welcome her to the program. How are you today? Really well, guys. How are you guys going? Yeah, very good. Much better to see you. But Rachel, you're responsible for a big team at Coke who oversee everything from marketing to finance to analytics. How would you describe your style of leadership? 
Um, Mike, I'll approach the question with linkages to our leadership pillars here at Coca-Cola Europe Pacific Partners. And one of the pillars is courageousness. Um, and that is definitely a leadership pillar that my style as a leader resonates with. Um, recently, early last year, I applied for a newly created role that involved creating a completely new cross-discipline team, which involves stepping into the unknown and really being comfortable with being uncomfortable and being comfortable to ask questions and testing new approaches out. Mm. Um, and in this example for me, it included implementing dedicated roles, disciplines like that of digital-led roles that was not a core role in park structures. So I would say that pillar would be one for me that resonates with me as a leader. And the second one I'd say is leading with care and positivity. Yeah. And for me, it's mm. really taking the time as a leader to listen to colleagues, team members, customers, consumers, and leading with a style that seeks to understand those around me and establish an environment where individuals flourish. I love mm. that. Very well Great. said. Ravi, I'm going to ask mm. you the same question. Yep. Yeah. Um, it's been quite an interesting uh, journey uh, in our case. I mean, with, uh, with 38 years of experience in running large and small corporations around the world, you know, we wanted to create a company that, that was going to be family feel, full of energy, full of vibe, and we have wonderful leaders going through the system. Rachel rightly touched, touched on something very important, and that is, you know, your, your pillar, which is your ground roots, your discipline that starts from the, uh, from the grassroots level and they grow as they learn uh, the organization and the methodologies of running, uh, running a business. I mean, in our case, we have got, you know, tenacity, we drive expertise, we drive ethics, and the most important one is the storytelling. And that's why you see, you know, people like, you know, Carla as an example are quite excited in joining a company that is growing and she's learning at the same time. Yeah, well yeah. said, well yeah. said. Rachel, back yeah. over to you. And part of your role, I understand, involves finding the leaders of the future at Coca-Cola. Do you instantly know when you interview someone for a role whether they're going to be a great leader or perhaps not? I'd say with the current curveballs of the past couple of years, yeah. more than yeah. ever, uh, individuals that really demonstrate that natural curiosity and a passion for being purpose-led in their approach to their careers and their development goals are always individuals that stand out for me. And by purpose-led, it's individuals that are aware of their strengths and actively seek ways to unlock what purpose their strengths play in their organisation and ultimately what they want to be known for as leaders. Mm. Yeah, Ralphie, over mm. to you. It's often said that it's lonely at the top. Mm. So how do you make sure that you are looking after the managers, I suppose, that you're working with and uh, looking after yourself as well as a leader? Absolutely. That's very important. I mean, uh, as you grow through the ranks and as you go, grow through the organization, you do become a bit lonely because you've got so much, such a big accountability and responsibility of running the brand. My role in this company is more of inspiration uh, to be there for them, you know, so we're there 24 seven, we've got contacts or emails, phones, you know, we, we get together every couple of days, every week we have a coffee meeting, you know, every month we get together for lunch and dinner as an example. That's my job, you know, to get, keep them connected. And in my case, you know, uh, I require uh, the vice versa. So they are there for me as well. And I think that's what makes a great company like ours, you know, growing and thriving through such difficult uh, market conditions. What I love about discussions yeah. like this is I actually feel like I'm yeah. learning something from yeah. both of you. So I really appreciate that. Great. But uh, Rachel, when you first started your career in the mid 90s, there were far fewer women in senior roles that there are now. It's been a fantastic shift. I wanted to ask, what do you think have been the biggest changes when it comes to our understanding of great leadership in a workplace, do you think? I would say, firstly, the biggest shift in leadership in the workplace since my first corporate job is really that growing role of emotional intelligence as a pillar of strong and I guess relatable leadership. And one of the outputs that we've all seen from this shift is that rise of flexibility in the workplace for both not only females, but also the instigation of paternity leave for working dads and support for caregivers. And within this rise of emotional intelligence as a key pillar amongst leaders has also come the shift towards really taking the time to understand our people that make up our teams, like seeking to understand how they would like to grow within the organisation, mm -hmm. understanding if they do feel a sense of purpose in their job and being open to ask what they need from us as leaders to do their best. And uh, I just want to go to Ravi for a mm -hmm. moment. I understand you guys are always on the lookout for 
leaders and people who are looking to get involved. Mm -hmm. If somebody's watching at home and they're mm -hmm. saying, hey, this looks like a cool place to mm -hmm. be working, I've got opportunities, I've got chances, yep. where should they be looking if they want to get involved? That's fantastic, Mike. You know, they can contact the Kick It In and uh, talk to myself about it because it's, it's a growing organization. We have got a lot of, you know, leadership fundamentals and pillars in place. We'd love to take people on board that, uh, that really, uh, you know, want to thrive in these difficult conditions, learn how to run a business, and what, what, what a better, better way to start than to join Kick It In and, and, and work with the CEO that wants to make a big difference and of course we're going to open 88 stores in the next uh, next few years so by 2030 we want to have 100 restaurants and some great leaders in australia i love your passion yeah. you yeah. just you g me up every time <laughs> we speak but uh, rachel part of your job is mentoring other leaders at coca-cola and i know you've been part of mentorship programs yourself what's your best piece of advice for leaders in business both for people currently in leadership roles and perhaps those that aspire to get there mm -hmm. i guess i'd say across all of our career paths there's always going to be opportunities for new roles, new jobs, new leadership positions. I'd say if you know how to do pretty much 100% of everything in that job ad, my advice is go for the one where there are aspects of the role that are new, that you haven't done before, because that's where growth happens and that's mm -hmm. where development happens. Don't be afraid to take a risk is what I say. Give it a crap, push your boundaries. If you make mistakes, that's okay, because it means that you've just learned something that you never knew before. Very well said by you, Rachel Delion. Thank you so much for joining us all the way from Coca-Cola and uh, helping us understand leadership a bit further. You're very welcome. Thank you for having me. And Ravi, once again, thank you for your time. Thanks, Mike. All right. And to all of you out there, remember you can catch up on our previous discussions and gain some valuable insight from our special guests. You can jump online and check them out at tickeroriginals.co. Next time on the show, we have a very special guest joining Ravi and I in the studio as we talk about how to create a successful business partnership. Thanks again for your company today. We'll catch you again soon when we open for business. See you again.